This is the beginning of a four day drawing and painting course called Floribunda. It's a course I've run over several years and I love it and it gets bigger and better and I get more ambitious with the kind of plants that we can supply. We started planning, and I say we because it's not just me that supplies the plants, uh, last autumn, thinking of the plants that will be available um, and planting bulbs and prepping. I have worked closely with two amazing ladies who make this course possible. The first is my mother, Leslie Ball. She has a beautiful garden and she has helped me enormously think about the kind of plants that we could use and also grow things for us and cut them. The other is a dear friend of both of ours called Jane Anderson and her husband Ian and they have an incredible garden, um, a seven acre woodland garden and she has again very generously cut the most special plants that you can't buy anywhere else um, for us to use and look at and celebrate in this course. It's a great privilege to have a garden as well these many years. What amazes me is that no matter how many springs or end of April's, beginning of May's, one has seen, every one comes as a total revelation. And it is enchanting. It is paradise. Nature gives me little bits that I think are so beautiful. I've got to build on them, like where something spreads out an arm and drips a few flowers or just plonks itself in a totally absurd place, but somehow it sort of works. Every single day of the year, um, there's something to see. Things in nature have a way of blending with each other. You know, you've got the purples and the pinks yeah. and the whites, yeah. and they just, they just blend really well. Mm. But I love kind of oranges. Orange and green is just... Um, it's just lovely. The difficulty f for me at the moment is trying not to control it because it, it needs to be free. It needs yeah. to be romantic. The title of the course suggests really Floribunda is an abundance of flowers and plants and they have the most beautiful sculptural, textural, uh, colour properties that really are a gift for painting. So what I would like you to do, you've got a couple of pieces of paper on your easels ready for you, is just take out a range of black equipment and just practice changing direction in unexpected ways. Sometimes it can be a nice delicate line, sometimes it kind of lurches, sometimes it's heavy. The pace at which you pull them out, the speed of it, makes a big difference to the quality of the line. Obviously you can go back in and you can kind of push it in. So if you want the line to be smoother, more velvety, softer, blurred. What have you got to do physically with your arm, with your body to change the way a line works? So the exciting thing about Paying attention to your marks and your directions right from the offset is the content is there. You're not hedging your bets. You're not kind of waiting till later to put the details in. The detail, the content is in the very mark that you do. So you've got this kind of lovely rubbed on chalk dust, this sort of gray, fluffy quality and this deep, deep dark. 
So what you're doing is with this dark space, you're creating something that's almost like uh, clay. You can start begin to kind of carve back and open out. And you might decide to sort of almost get rid of all of the dark and just leave yourself with a black edge. Maybe that's the way of creating the line. We're starting at the back, if you like. We're starting at the depth, the weight, the sculptural quality. And it doesn't really matter. You can make this quite random to start with, just an area of different sorts of darks and just pull out and find and sculpt. Because as we found out with the first bit of mark making, you weren't even thinking about the flowers. You were concentrating on the marks and the subject was already coming through in the way that you were putting the marks on, the direction, the feel of them. So how can you do the equivalent that you've just been doing in charcoal with the other tools that you've got? So almost imperceptible, but purple sitting on purple. So we've got again a little bit of depth coming out as well. Think of the depth of that tulip. Velvet. Think of velvet. Paint is also three-dimensional, so you can really use that to have impact and it sets other things off that are sitting there. I like to rub things off a lot, like I was doing before, but in a more drastic way. And then you've got old marks underneath, which are very nice, and maybe you can, I don't know, maybe I can salvage them a little bit more. Sometimes you can scratch back through, or maybe I haven't got enough paint on there. Oh, look, scratch a bit of the blue back. So you can open up an area of the painting, you can, you know, again, drawing back through. It's the correcting I find really exciting. It's, you know, things go wrong in inverted commas on a painting. You don't like something, that is an opportunity. Step up and do it like you mean it. You're always adding, 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 rather than taking away. Even putting the white on, it took away something, but it also gave something. So you need to see everything as an opportunity rather than a backward step. So really in these four days of painting, it's an opportunity for the artist to explore what the paint can give, but also try and capture some of those extraordinary qualities of the plants. These four days are really a celebration of flowers and plants and the abundance of nature. <laughs>